Well, welcome once again, friends, to First Baptist Church, Grand Cayman. I'm delighted that so many of you have regularly joined us over these many weeks. And going forward into next week, we're going to start making these broadcasts available in a third format that will ultimately, as it were, cover the other two formats we've been using. Up to now, you can go to our website, get the Daily Devotional, or go to YouTube, likewise. But from next Monday into the new week, we'll be making these broadcasts available in what we call podcast. Now, don't worry if you don't think you've got access to that. Many of us have got it on our phones, and by going to First Baptist Church, Grand Cayman, we can get the podcast there. But whether you use the podcast or our website or YouTube, you'll from next week be able to get these daily devotionals in verbal rather than visual form. So you won't have to keep affirming, Steve Brady, you're right. You've got a great face for radio. For starting next week, that will be that verbal communication rather than the visual we've had the last few weeks. But do please continue to join us and may God bless you. Amen. Well, welcome, friends, once again to First Baptist Church, Grand Cayman. I'm delighted you're joining us for our daily devotionals in the book of Numbers. The daily devotional, My Utmost for His Highest, by Oswald Chambers, is reckoned to be the best-selling devotional of all time. Oswald Chambers was an outstanding Christian. He died at a comparatively young age of 43 in 1917 in Egypt. And yet behind his devotional, which was gathered up by his wife, uh, who took down his talks in shorthand and then reproduced them, was this passionate heart for God. When one of his biographies was written, it was simply entitled, Abandoned to God, illustrating, of course, this deep commitment that he had to Jesus Christ. In many ways, of course, he's simply echoing the Apostle Paul's call at the end of of 11 chapters in Romans, laying out the great story of God's rescue plan in Christ. The Apostle then puts one of his therefores in, in chapter 12. Therefore, I beseech you, brothers, sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual worship, your your act of devotion, however you want to translate it, the giving of yourself, abandoning yourself to God. Of course, a cursory reading of the Old Testament quickly alerts us to the fact that many of these folk who were supposed to be abandoned to God were anything but, and that's also mirrored sadly too in much of the New Testament church. However, when we come to Numbers chapter 6, we do find a group of people who were abandoned to God, who were deeply dedicated to him. They're called the Nazarites. And the Nazarite vow, which could be a long-term thing of some a month, or in some cases, one's whole life. A Nazarite vow involved three things. It was the avoidance of wine and strong drink, one. Two, the leaving of one's hair to grow long, so it was uncut. And thirdly, having no contact with dead bodies, even a funeral for a close relative. What was behind this group of Nazarites was simply this. They were the most dedicated lay people in ancient Israel. The putatively really dedicated ones were the priests and Levites and others But these folk had set themselves apart for God. And you may remember that Samuel, the prophet and priest, he was somebody known who was a Nazarite. And more famously and memorable, of course, is Samson, a Nazarite from his womb. And again, sadly, the story of his life is one of much failure and not keeping his Nazarite vows. Unless we think that's all, quote, Old Testament stuff. In Acts 18, for example, we're told that the Apostle Paul had taken, on one occasion, a Nazarite vow, a period of consecration specifically, for some reason or other, to the living God. 
And so what's the Nazarite vow got to do with us today? Well, I think it actually illustrates, at least to me, a, a missing note from much contemporary Christian faith. It's a, a word that really used to be quite bandied around years ago, but seems to have fallen into disuse in many Christians' experience. That word would be consecration. That act of giving yourself to God, of abandoning yourself to God. The great uh, hymn writer, maybe wrote as many as 8,000 hymns, Fanny J. Crosby, in 1875, penned some words, I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be nearer, closer drawn to thee. And then she says these words, consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. And it's that sense of consecration, of consecrate me, Lord, take me, Lord, use me, Lord, that is at the heart of being a Nazarite. Today, of course, to be wholly dedicated to the Lord does not mean literally having to grow our hair long, keep away from the fruit of the vine, or not attend even family funerals. No, what it really means is this, going forward, I am dedicated to God. I give myself to the God who in Jesus has given himself to me. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. But reading through Numbers 6 and reading through the Bible, oh, how we all know our own individual weaknesses. The trouble with a living sacrifice, as somebody says, is it has a habit of keep crawling off the altar of dedication. And that's why today I need all the help I can get to live for God and to be abandoned to him. And therefore, the big takeaway from number six is not just my giving myself to God, but hearing those well-known words that finish the chapter off. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May he do so as we afresh today dedicate and abandon ourselves to the loving, living God. Amen.